Tyrannosaurus Rex could bite with the force of 51,000 newtons, Giganotosaurus 25,000 newtons, and Spinosaurus with 12,000 newtons. We've all heard these measurements as well as many others beforehand, whether it be from videos putting two theropods against each other, in documentaries, or even movies. But how exactly do we get those numbers? How in the world do we know that these dinosaurs could bite with such force? Well, that's what I'll be answering today. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, bringing you today's video on how paleontologists estimate dinosaur bite forces. Now that I'm thinking about it, not exactly sure why I'm specifying dinosaurs, as this technically applies to all extinct animals. I think it's important to know that there are a fair few number of methods to estimate bite force, though the ones that I'll be using today are commonly used and are often used in combination with each other to achieve the highest level of accuracy, reliability, and validity possible. We'll be touching on anatomical analysis, biomechanical modeling, finite element analysis, and comparative study with living animals. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's jump into this. Anatomical analysis is like the foundation of a skyscraper. It provides the groundwork for understanding dinosaur bite forces. Fossilized remains, particularly skull and jawbones, offer a wealth of information about the anatomy of extinct animals. Scientists meticulously examine these fossils, observing the intricate details of their morphology. By scrutinizing the shape and structure of the skull and jawbones, researchers can infer the size, arrangement, and attachment points of the muscles involved in jaw movement and biting. This is highly important for establishing where to kick off when determining a dinosaur's bite. One key aspect of anatomical analysis is identifying the muscles responsible for jaw movement and biting. By tracing the impressions of attachment points left on fossilized bones, scientists can reconstruct the soft tissue structures, including muscles, tendons, and ligaments. This process allows researchers to map out the intricate network of muscles that powered the dinosaur's jaws. Furthermore, anatomical analysis helps scientists to understand how the size and shape of the skeletal features influence muscle function. The size and shape of the jawbones and arrangement of teeth can provide clues about the forces exerted during biting. The perfect example of this is by comparing the T-Rex and the Spinosaurus. You can clearly see that one's more robust with teeth meant for crunching down on bone, while the other is a lot more slender, meant for fishing. By examining the morphology of the skull and jawbones in detail, researchers can infer the mechanical advantage of different muscle groups and estimate the bite forces that they were able to exert. Overall, anatomical analysis forms the foundation of measuring dinosaur bite forces. By carefully studying the fossilized remains of the dinosaurs, they can create an estimated reconstruction of their anatomy and then gain insights into their size arrangement and biomechanical capabilities of the muscles responsible for jaw movement and biting. And yes, knowing the bite force of let's say a T-Rex is cool and all, but this knowledge is actually essential for understanding the feeding ecology and evolutionary adaptions of these fascinating creatures. Now we move on to biomechanical modeling. This is a powerful technique that complements anatomical analysis in the study of dinosaur bite forces. By utilizing sophisticated computer simulations, scientists can recreate the biomechanical behavior of dinosaur jaws and muscles with a high level of accuracy. These models incorporate a multitude of parameters, including muscle size, leverage, and joint mechanics, all in which simulate the complex interactions between skeletal elements and soft tissues during biting. A major advantage of biomechanical modeling is its advantage to predict the maximum forces that dinosaur muscles could generate during biting. By inputting anatomical data obtained from fossilized remains into these simulations, researchers can simulate different biting scenarios and explore how variations in muscle morphology and skeletal structure may have influenced bite force capabilities across different dinosaur species. Biomechanical models open the door for scientists to test hypotheses and make further predictions about feeding behaviors and ecological roles of extinct dinosaurs. A specific example would include the use of physiological cross-sectional area. By estimating the PCSA of the dinosaur muscles, researchers can infer the potential force generation capabilities of these muscles based on biomechanical principles. This information combined with other factors such as muscle leverage and joint mechanics helps scientists to estimate the maximum forces that the muscle could produce during the action of binding. An example of a study that you Utilize this would be Paul Ginnack and Gregory Erickson's The Biomechanics Behind Extreme Osteophagy in Tyrannosaurus Rex. Within this, they estimated muscle strength by following a three-step process. First, they averaged the volumes of muscles on the left and right sides. Then they divided this average volume by the density of archosaur skeletal muscle to find the muscle mass. Finally, they divided this mass by the average length of muscle to estimate the muscle stress. For this, they used a standardized muscle stress value based on previous studies, and this process allowed for them to model muscle forces assuming maximum and muscle contraction, and from this they were able to estimate a bite force of 8,526 to 34,522 newtons. This is a simplified version of it, but I'm sure you get the gist. Now we're onto finite element analysis, also known as FEA. 
This is often used in conjunction with anatomical analysis and biomechanical modeling to provide a more comprehensive understanding of dinosaur biomechanics. Like biomechanical modeling, FEA allows for researchers to simulate the stresses and strains experienced by skeletal structures during biting, providing valuable insights into the forces exerted by muscles. In context of studying dinosaur bite forces, FEA enables scientists to analyze how different factors such as muscle size, leverage, and bone density contribute to the overall biomechanics of biting. Integrating FEA with other method researchers can refine their estimations of dinosaur bite forces and gain a more detailed understanding of the biomechanical capabilities of these ancient creatures. A specific example of its use is by Emily Rayfield, who used FEA to estimate the Tyrannosaurus bite force. The bolts ranged from 31,000 to 78,060 newtons, which were applied to individual teeth in the model. These forces were based on calculations by other paleontologists and observation of tooth puncture marks on the bones bitten by T-Rex. Rayfield's findings supported the puncture pool beating hypothesis, indicating that T-Rex's skull was equally adapted to resist biting and tearing forces. The model showed that major stresses during biting occurred in the skull pillar-like parts and nasal bones, while loose connections in the cheek region acted as shock absorbers to protect other skull structures. So to be honest, FEA is more like a subcategory of biomechanical modeling being more specific. And FEA isn't limited, as it's able to assist us in understanding intracranial flexibility in skulls, as well as assisting in understanding in correlations between stress environment, cranial strength, and social morphology. Really, it's utilized as a vital tool to study dinosaur bite forces and enabling scientists to bridge the gap between anatomy and function. Through meticulous simulations, researchers continue to push the boundaries of our understanding of dinosaur biomechanics and evolutionary adaptions. And for the last point, we have comparative studies with living animals. Now, these are important as they provide invaluable insights into understanding dinosaur bite forces. Scientists often use measurements of bite forces from modern day animals, mainly archosaurs such as crocodilians and birds. The archosaurs are a more focal point as they share evolutionary relationships with the dinosaurs. By correlating bite force measurements with anatomical features of these animals, researchers can establish general principles of how bite forces relate to skull morphology, muscle size, and other biomechanical factors. This comparative approach allows for scientists to make educated estimates about the bite forces of extinct dinosaurs based on similarities in anatomy and function with their living relatives. For example, if a particular species of extinct animals shared specific jaw morphology and muscle arrangement with a modern crocodile, researchers can infer that they likely had a comparable bite force. Now, this isn't a dinosaur, but let's say you found the jaws of a dinosuchus, and then you went through your whole process of stress testing and all that sort of stuff, and then you see you had the bite force of, let's say, 3,000 newtons. Then you might think, hey, we figured it out, there's 3,000 newtons. But then if you compare it to a saltwater crocodile, you realize that you have a problem, as there is no way that dinosuchus we have the same bite force of a saltwater crocodile. I'm just saying it greatly assists in the understanding of bite forces. Similarly, if a dinosaur exhibited characteristics similar to those of modern day predatory birds, such as raptors, scientists can make informed predictions about its feeding ecology and hunting behavior. By studying the diversity of bite forces amongst modern animals, scientists can gain insights in the range of potential feeding strategies and ecological roles that dinosaurs may have occupied in their respective ecosystems. Thus, comparative studies with living animals serve as a cornerstone in deciphering the biomechanics of dinosaur bite forces. By leveraging the wealth of anatomical and biomechanical data from both extant and extinct species, scientists continue to advance our understanding of dinosaur feeding strategies and evolutionary adaptions that shape their predatory strategies. And that pretty much helps us YouTubers when debating this to be like, hey, T-Rex had a stronger bite than Giga, hence it wins. Wrapping this up into a nice bite-sized piece, the measurement of dinosaur bite forces relies on the combination of methods, including anatomical analysis, biomechanical modeling, finite element analysis, and comparative studies with living animals. Anatomical analysis provides the foundation insights into the anatomy of the extinct animal, while biomechanical modeling and FEA simulate the biomechanical behavior of dinosaur jaws and muscles. Comparative studies with living animals offer additional insights by correlating bite force measurements with anatomical features. Together, these methods assist scientists to attempt to accurately unravel the mysteries of dinosaur feeding behaviors and evolutionary adaptions. And now we've reached the end of the video. And yeah, this one was a fair bit more sciencey than the usual, but I appreciate if you've watched up until this point. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.